Morning, July 6, 2020. Uh, we were in a non-public session prior to this, so we'll move right into our scheduled appointments. Uh, for 7 o'clock, we have the town clerk and the moderator for the election policy. Tammy's supposed to be here. She's probably right downstairs. Um, I saw her leave. I don't know if she came back. Maybe that's her right here. You can send her an email. You're, you're all aware that the Secretary of State is sending PPE for all elections? Yes, we got a notice today. Yeah. They're sending hand sanitizer, shields. Yeah, she's going to go over that, and, and uh, it's supposed to last for both elections. So, Ellen, is it okay if we jump to you as Human Services Director sure. first, since you're here? Is that okay with the board? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I handed out some paperwork for you. Yep. Um, we are trying to update the book. We do it every couple of years. And um, one of the things that is actually a change is that in the determination of eligibility and amount, I believe it's maybe page 13, but I've given you just the single page just in the whole chapter where it's adding in internet. As at this point, we have not ever allowed anyone to use the cost of internet when they're telling us what their monthly expenses are. That seems unreasonable based on how things are going and how people do education. We do welfare first. Um, um, so we're, I've asked to add that in, um, and we've added that as part of the guidelines. So that in itself is a change in the wording. Um, I then included behind that um, the documentation of where we've come up with that amount. We also are going to then, part of the requirement will be that they have to apply for the inter, um, essential services, which could be $10 a month, but not everyone's going to apply for that, so we will allow it for a certain amount to be included in their monthly cost. So that's something we'd have to look at and approve. We've also then amended all of the food costs, um, rental costs, mortgage costs, um, based on the current documentation from HUD, um, USDA, um, the IRS for mileage rates, all of those things. So I put in what our new guidelines would be, and behind each of those guidelines, like for example, is still rent, and the new numbers for rent, and the documentation for where we came up with those numbers. One of the things is when you do this kind of documentation, you can't just pick a number and say, well, this sounds good. You have to be able to show, in case you ever brought into court or challenged, where those numbers came from. So they're in different parts of the book, but I've tried to put them together for you. So as you're looking at where the costs are, you can look at the documentation as to how we came up with those numbers. I'm giving this to you today so you can look through them. We have to post it for two weeks. So I just want to briefly go over with you the documentation you have before you, the ability to look through it. I've already posted one copy outside. That's already posted, but Susan wants to post another one downstairs or something. Mm -hmm. And then all of the documentation has that this will be adopted July 20th. I figured that was two weeks from today. And if that could be on your agenda, then um, we can go through it, make any changes you want to or whatever, but that's what all this is. Again, we do it every couple of years. We're due. And it seemed that with, obviously, costs of things have been increasing. The internet issue, it seemed the appropriate time to bring this forward to get it up to date. So that's basically what that is. So if anyone has any questions, you can feel free to call me. Anything specific catches your eye, or we can talk about it in two weeks. and. Um, either change things as we need to or have you guys adopted that night? Thank any you. questions, Wayne? No. Nope. I'd say the packets, thank you for the detailed information. The supporting documents are there, so I appreciate it. Good. Okay. Okay. Uh, back to the town clerk and moderator election policy. Oh, no, that's okay. Um, so we just wanted to kind of give you guys a heads up on the election, the two elections that are coming up. 
um, because of the whole COVID situation, we actually did receive an email from the Secretary of State's office that they are providing a lot of the stuff we're going to ask you guys to provide. So you're off the hook on a lot of that, but there are some items that we do need to address, like the need for additional personnel. I have reached out to all my ballot clerks. About half of them say, yeah, I don't think so. They're older, they're retired, they have health issues. They're not coming. They don't feel safe. I don't blame them. Um, so we are gonna need some additional personnel. Might help if we, if we paid more than $7.25 an hour. It's not a fun job. You're saying like seven fifty or seven. <laughs> the meal isn't enough. The meal, no. Uh, it's a long day, and that's a lot to ask for someone, especially to wear a mask all day long for seven dollars and twenty-five cents an hour. And the other thing is to want to have additional personnel. We're assuming that everyone's going to have to wear a mask. Now, for all we know, October the sun's going to shine, life's going to be great, and we don't have any more illness. That doesn't seem to be on the horizon, but you never know. But if nothing changes, you can't have somebody be in a mask for eight hours without taking a couple of breaks to, if nothing else, go up to the car and take Please. them in a spot for a Have a cigarette. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. So, but in order to do that, we would really need to have additional personnel that can step in and flow and give someone a break. I don't think we can get by with what we want. Or have split shifts, if possible. Mm -hmm. And we do have a couple people that do like to only work the mornings or only the afternoon, and we do split people. And along with that, it might be time that the Board of Selectmen start learning how to check people in and do that part. I mean, we're going to ask, due to the fact that we think we're going to need to give people the ability to take a few minute break or something, if um, maybe we could, if we got stuck with people, since there is going to be at least three members of the Board of Selectmen there, Maybe they could help being the float to take over for 10 minutes while someone took a break or did something like that, so. The other thing you need to, to consider too, that you're gonna have more applications for absentee ballots. So your moderator is gonna need help. That's not gonna work the way we normally do. Right, we've already said, we have a change in place. Yeah, we've already, Ellen came up with a great idea that we've, because we expect a flood of absentee ballots, so we come up with something we think is going to work. We got so. some of the information that you've been nice enough to send me and some of the a webinar was that you can have more than one set of books and stuff and as long as you announce when you're doing it, let people watch, you can do all the absentee ballots separate with different books and not have to interrupt the oh, line. Oh, that's great. And I don't know if that's new, but I, I that's heard it. So yes. we heard that this year and it's like, Let's do that. We'll just announce we'll have a Republican and a Democrat watching us so no one's going to think anything's wrong and let it be public and we can do it that way so we don't have to be in those lines. And at the same time, when we feed them, we're going to empty the machine completely and then start feeding in all the absentee ballots into one machine, box them all up so everything's separate. In some cases, any questions, challenges, whatever, they'll be able to be separate as absentee. But it was, it was something that was in the paperwork that you sent me and I signed up for, and I'm like, oh, we can have more than one book? So, I, yeah, I think that's great. I think I would make it a lot easier. So, Phil, I would make a motion to pay the electoral workers um, $15 an hour, with the exception of elected officials don't get paid. Just so you could find people. You're not going to find people at $10. We're well, we checking people in, we're not going to get paid? What? Uh -huh. Elected officials don't get paid. You know, guys, right, I'm not going to second that number one. And okay. I want to talk to it. I think that's a big so, Okay, hang on. He has a motion. Is there a second? It was a second. You second? Okay. okay. We have motion and a second. Discussion. I think that no. my number one comment is people that work the polls do not do it for the money. I know that. They really do not do it for the money. That's correct. I, and I'm, I'm all in favor of going up, but I think 15 is a big leap. I will not support it. I agree, but the problem is the people that do it for the volunteer ask for the aspect aren't available, and to get someone I, for universal work is everywhere. The standard is pretty much fifteen, and it, it's horrible. But like that, I bet there are part-time police officers who make twenty-one, twenty-two dollars an hour who will freak out over this. I mean, there are other 
notifications. What are we paying all our staff members? We're paying them 20 bucks and then we're going to pay a one No, it's just for that. It's just for those. No, no, no. Okay. This, no. I have no problem with the board of selectmen having their own discussions yeah. and coming up with what they think is a reasonable amount. And then we can put it up there and see if we get any one of those amounts. If not, we'll come back and let you know. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. What are the qualifications? They have 18. to be able to hear. 18? You have to be 18? Yeah. yeah. You need to be able to read the names in the checklist. Yeah. It, there's really no qualifications. I mean, I've brought in a, a few people, just people I know, and say, hey, can you, and you just, you have to make sure you can see the ID and cross them off the list and be able I to. I just wondered if it was anything we could go to the high school with for government students or. No, we could, as long as they were 18, they could work. Yeah, that's what I mean. If we go to the high school and yeah. talk to them. And, because, first of all, youth, they're less likely to get the virus. That's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. Yeah. I think you're going to get it for something. And then, right, you're going to get $10 an hour. Well, I would be okay with $10 an hour anyway. But again, the issue is that this is not becoming a national issue. It's been on the news and everything else because, again, most places have older people. Yeah, who that's retired, true. absolutely correct. Who are not some of the elections that they've been having across the country. They've been having trouble with getting some of the workers. Plus, they're like, yeah, I, I'd really rather not put myself in that situation. So. Except that we still have a higher unemployment rate today than we did a year ago or two years ago. And so there will be more of the people available. But they're well, already no. collecting an Okay, let me pull this back here. So we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion on the motion? There is. All I can tell you is the local businesses can't get people to come into work for them for even $15, $18 an hour. So I just want to make that a point to you that all the local businesses I speak speak to on a regular basis, their help won't come in to work. So you're going to have a problem getting people. And I, and I, I do just want to say this. Under these particular circumstances, normally I would think, oh, $10, that's reasonable. We're asking people to come in and have to wear masks and do all that kind of stuff. And we are more than happy to part time police officers come in and volunteer to do it as well. So you brought them up. The first I'm election is in October, right? September. 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 The day after Labor Day. Your favorite one. <laughs> yeah, and I'll be here on Labor Day. And we were um, thinking that the September 8th one was okay. going to be the dress rehearsal for the November one. Right. So if I could make a proposal. Can we table this until the next meeting so yes. we can do a little more thorough study on sure. what we're looking at for a labor pool and, and we could potentially work that? Possibly yep. check with the high schools, you know, to see if there's any groups that would be willing to help for a public trust. Civics or something? Yeah, or, or if we could bring in 30 kids for a two hour piece or something, you know, for some small amount of time. Someone's got to train them too and supervise them. I'm not training to check people in. I don't they don't have to be residents, right? Well, but you, you don't know have to what it is to check them. You don't realize the things you have to ask or not ask. Yeah, and it has they to be have to be trained. It has to be checked off a certain way depending on, because in September, people are going to be deciding whether they're Democrat or Republican, if they are clear. Yeah, that's 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 right. <laughs> and speaking of that, that's another thing we need to address at some point. I know this isn't the time, but I will be coming at the Budget Committee. It's time to increase the, our supervisors, their salaries. So, okay, hang on, hang on, Ellie, hang on, please. So, is that acceptable to the board that we table that? Oh, yes. Yes, okay. As far as the selectmen working the check-in station, I think we can, and forgive me if I'm wrong on this, but I thought that our role there was to verify or certify the election results, which entailed us being there, watching them physically being fed into the machine. Yes. Which entails two people. I, I didn't know that you couldn't check people in. I'm not saying we can't. I'm just saying if we only have three people there and two people are taken up at that, that machine, it would just be one person kind of floating in and yeah. out. So that, yeah. that's my only point on that. You don't have to check the entire board. We know that you have certain duties too. But right. I think while you have to have the majority there, I don't think three people necessarily have to be 
watching. No, I, I, and I'm, I'm just saying, I, I, I don't think there's an issue with someone filling in for someone while they go take a smoke break or a mask break or whatever, but it, it, we can't count on that to be. Okay. And if we put Don and Kevin checking people in, they'll never have time to vote by the time they're going to talk. <laughs> <laughs> also a consideration. <laughs> Thanks, Rich. Put me at the back one. <laughs> depending on what they decide to do or not do. We've got the list. I've read through it. I'm not sure. I mean, Tammy and I were talking about whether or not we actually are going to wind up needing some of the plexiglass separators like we have at her office for people checking in at the same time. You know, well, like, and they do, are going to provide some. I think you're going to need some plexiglass. I understand, but I wasn't sure that they said the device. So, cool. Okay. We want to get this going. Spread the tables out. Well, even if you spread the table, you're going to have two people at the table. You're going to have an observer, especially at the primary, you have to have a Republican Democrat balance. Yeah. Right. You know, you're working, so that's a, that's a key. You can't spread them out too far because the person has to hear whether they're getting a Republican or Democrat ballot. Okay. Be good? Yeah. And we just wanted to get this up now because we figured come yeah. September and yeah, November. I can't hear you, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I, I just, everybody else is talking oh, okay. at the same time. Um, that come September, October, if we waited, we didn't want to be trying to get this when everyone in the nation was trying to do right. the same thing. So. And, and, and I mean, I will say that we did have an election when this was on, I mean, it was the start of this whole thing, but I think we had guidelines in place there that maybe not as strict as now, but we were, this isn't the first time we're doing this. No. Uh, but yeah, I think it's, and if that is the requirement that we have to have a divider between people checking in, we should probably. They, they're going to provide. We think no, they will provide. They are provide. Okay. The only thing I don't know about, which I will find about, is a divider between the ballot boxes themselves. Should there be a divider, but I'll find out. Like and I guess if worst came to worst, we could use the one from downstairs and bring that up. And yeah. This is all going to be going through the emergency management mm -hmm. person. Is that you? Are you? It's Rich. It's Rich Graham. I knew it used to be the three of you, but I wasn't sure. So yep. apparently, that's going to be going through you guys. So you have to be aware of the fact that they're going to reach out to you about what you need and all that kind of stuff. And then we're supposed to reach out to you to make sure you're aware of it. You're going to explain this to us? Yes, that's the, that's okay. the next, are we ready to move on? Yes, so, I've done my stuff, so I think we're all good. Okay, I so that, that's it for the election? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So, yeah, we'll follow up on the payment for yeah. the workers yeah. in, two, in two weeks. So, just quickly, I was asked to provide some information as far as how we're doing on tax revenue. If you look at the green one, that's this year. Right now we have, from the last bit, we build out $9 million. We have 423,000 uncollected, which is darn good. How is that compared to the last year? So if you look at the orange sheet, okay. so I can't cut it off on the same exact day, but at the end of July last year, it was 341,000. So we still have, from now to the end of July. Wow. And at the end of June, it was a million. It was outstanding last year. So we're doing very well. We build, we receive 3.8 million in wire transfers. The rest of them were hand were checks that we received in the office or payments over the internet that we inputted manually. Wow, that's excellent. Yeah. So we, you know, we, we've been working really hard. Um, I, there may be more monies out there, but I have no access to my internet, so I don't know if we received any money. Which brings me to my next point. As most of you are aware, we have no internet. This is unacceptable. I am dead in the water. I can't transfer money to the state because I can't pull all my reports to find out how much money we brought in. I can't post payments for taxes because I don't have any reports. I don't know who's trying to contact me. I didn't know that we got an email from the Secretary of State's office. Unacceptable. We have to do something. We, we, we already talked about it earlier tonight. Okay. Thank you. And that's it. Thanks, Tim. Anything else you guys need? 341,000.
I'm sorry? We could use the 341,000. I think it's coming. This December may be more of a challenge. I will tell you that I did talk to um, a representative from Avatar, who was our software um, provider for our taxes, and they said that they found throughout the state everyone's is done much better than they had expected, and you know people that are paying their um, mortgages, and that's the 3.8 million. That's the people. That's what we're getting from mortgages. Yeah. Um, they're they're um, the, the banks. They're going to pay it. So whether they're paying, keeping up with their mortgages or not, they're going to pay these the taxes. So. Thank you. You're very welcome. Have a nice evening. I'm going back on vacation. If you need to reach me, call me up myself. I'll email you. Wise <laughs> guy. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, we got an email from uh, Anthony Scafidi. Scafidi. Or is that where you're at? Yep. Uh, 
Um, and the organization that runs it is asking for us to support it, and I would do it for, for not a fee for three Sundays. See how it goes, and then if they decide they want to use it more, then I'd say we have to figure out something. But I, I think, you know, these families benefited from their generosity, and I hit the nickel and dime on for three Sundays. Yeah, between Mr. Mr. Scafidi was here at the last meeting, and I thought he did a very good job uh, explaining the situation. I think his email, this letter, clearly articulates the advantages to, to being a good neighbor, so to speak, and I would have no objection to us going forward with this partnership. If it doesn't work out, we won't do it next year. Yeah. Okay, that's fair enough. I mean, the difference last time was that was a completely different organization holding a for-profit company holding tournaments in. This is going to be mostly our own kids, so that's the difference. They may be a for-profit company, but they're, you know, it like, looks like we've got a future out here right now. No, the, the, for them to use the organization. Uh, show it again. Yeah, what's, what's it? Is it just show, use it for show baseball? Uh, they're looking for three dates right now. No, he's looking for the 11th. Well, it would be potentially this weekend, but I think he's going to use a different field through September. Their games run through. Okay, so it'll be every Sunday through. Oh, every Sunday? I thought he was just said three. It's July 11th, uh, July 11th through August, uh, September 7th. Oh, uh, okay. Their season runs. Injection. They're playing 30 games in a month and a half, and they're doing double headers. Well, so I, I play two here, and they play two at the other place. My only issue with that now, we're using the field a lot. I, I would think we'd have to do something maintenance of the field. I, 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 at three, I didn't have an issue. That I think we have to figure out a cost. I, I, I hate to charge them, but I think we have to for the maintenance of the field. Okay. What I mean, do we have an idea? Maybe what a what a fair estimate is. I mean, like I said, the nice thing is this is not I, I, just that. for the sake of clarity. I'll withdraw that motion for now. I thought it was three Sundays. Yeah, that's, that's I'm glad he walked in because I'm like, uh, I didn't realize it was only three. What three games? What we're looking to do, and what we said in the letter, is they're going to allow us to use Grand Fields all winter. Mm -hmm. So as, many, as much as we can get in at Grand Fields for all of our teams, and they're just looking for three teams right now. And essentially it's um, on the application, um, Ralph Paquetti, he, uh, it's, his name is not on there, it's on the um, facilities use form that I... That's in the same as your folder. He coaches in the Queentown League, which Sanborn plays in. And the majority of his kids on his two teams that he has play in our Queentown League. And they're looking to use it on the weekends when we're not using it. And he says everything would go through us first. If there's any scheduled conflict, Sanborn gets, or in Queentown gets the field first before they would take it. And they do have their own insurance. And so, and so, I would, so I would say really that yeah, the fields would definitely get used more, but the, the normal routine maintenance is really provided by us with dragging the fields. There's annual maintenance that uh, Rich and his crew always do with the rototilling and obviously uh, a lot of the mowing and stuff like that. I don't think it would, I mean, Rich, do you foresee any increased costs during the usage? Yeah. And obviously, the only impact for us is they would have an impact on what we pay to remove garbage disposal. But for us, the trade-off of what they already provide to us is well worth the trade-off to come out of our budget that we fundraise. And this year, they're not, we're not running the dumpsters, and they know that, and they're gonna have bags collect their trash and take it out of the facility this year. Because we told them, because of, and he knows because he runs Atkins in this program. They're doing the same thing. There are no bathrooms, and he knows there's not gonna be any bathrooms, and he knows he's gonna collect the trash and take it out every after every, Day that they use it. No bathrooms? Just because of the COVID and the touching, uh, the whole league is, most of the towns are not doing bathrooms. There's a few towns that decided to put bathrooms in. But so where are they going to go? They're going to sneak out. They're going to go in the woods, probably. <laughs> That's, we and then we've told all our families there's no bathrooms at certain fields. I'm not so sure you don't have to provide bathrooms. That, that's losing, guys. Yeah, I mean, that's losing. <laughs> 
get a hit. Yeah, has any problem with the eight, I can tell you that right now. First time someone is out in the woods, using their backyard, the bathroom, you're going to have problems. And we can put one in, that's not a problem. We can yeah, call it. I, I think it'd be prudent to just put it in there. We provide the supplies and we'll, you know, after every, we'll just ask them, just like with the snack shack, somebody's probably going to have to go spray down and wipe down the bathroom. You probably won't be doing it after every little kid goes in there, but you're going to have to do it by the end of the day. So yeah. Something. We'll ask the company. We'll get one in the last. Mike, so, why don't I, can I propose this? Why don't we require a deposit? I mean, it is little kids playing on yeah. this, and it's a field that's not going to get used, and it's meant to get used. I think if we require a deposit, and at the end of the, you know, at September 7th, we go out there, Rich's guys will obviously be monitoring it. If they're constantly having to pick up trash and things like that, then we're going to be taking from the deposit. If not, you get your money back. You took care of it. It's, I mean, Rich, would that work for you guys? Sure. Yeah. Does that come into compliance with our use of town property? So we did not have a set fee for the Magnuson Field. That was not included on our facilities use area because it was pretty much meant for the, the Little League. About the overall use of town property, does it come in compliance with the overall use of town property? Of course it does. That's a good question. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, this of course it does. You know what I'm saying? But if they put the deposit down, if they put the deposit, you know, I think that's a happy medium. And, and I guess my caveat to that would be it, we're going to reach a halfway point. So come August, if it's just not working. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And listen, we'd probably be the biggest advocate to let you know if it wasn't working because it ultimately causes problems for us or I'm sure Rich would say, hey, this isn't working. Like the company that came in last year, we didn't know about them not paying the town, by the way. we had, If we had known, I would have been on top of them to pay it. But they asked at the beginning of the year to use the field, and I said, oh, it's going to be $2,500 for you guys to use the field. <laughs> and he's like, I can't afford that. I'm like, well, that's just that's the way it is. Which we had to say, I don't want them to use it. Can you guys just say, no, I just said it's going to be an astronomical amount of money just because we didn't want them to use it again. But with these guys at the show, we've dealt with them before. I know Ralph on a personal level. Um, I know he's not going to, and he's one of those guys that if there's a piece of trash on the ground, he is going to yell at the parent to pick it up. Well, you weren't here, but that's what you said. The difference between them and this organization, there are Kingston residents yeah. using it. That was a, a for-profit company with outside people. Yeah. Yeah. No ties to the community. Yeah. Yeah. These guys are for-profit, but they do have Kingston and Newton residents, so the people that play in the Sanborn district, playing for their teams and participating with what their teams. What did you have in mind for so awesome weekends were we talking? They would want it every weekend through the end of August. How many is that? It's eight weekends. One would require an $800 deposit. Yeah, I was thinking 1000 but yeah. 1000 that's fine. Make a motion that we entertain a $1,000 deposit. Second. A motion and a second. Further discussion? The stipulation is it's only if something happens that yeah. it's a deposit. That the intent is to give it back. If they so were they were more than the yeah. Yeah. And they, I, I know they're going to be under, like he has access to Lawrence High School right now to use it, but he lives in Atkinson. He doesn't want to drive to Lawrence High School to play baseball. He'd rather stay local with the kids that are local instead of making them drive an hour to get there. Yeah, we need a porta potty there too. That's you gotta have a porta potty. Okay, I mean, we, I can get one put it. Yeah, you can't. Uh, the only stipulation I would ask you to come back and report to us, not in the fall, but next spring, if they fulfill their what they promised you for the winter. Yes, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yes. I want to hear like the promises of what they would do. They already provided for us when there was nothing for them yet. Yeah. <laughs> no, and honestly, I mean, if this is helping Kingston kids, there's nothing going on for kids yeah. this year. So, yeah. I mean, we got to just do it for that yeah. reason. Yeah. yeah. When Seacoast still owned Granite Fields, we used it. They got us their rate for Granite Fields because it was a discounted rate because they were going through the transaction to purchase it. And we paid them a check to the show because they were going to pay the fee for us. 
and he said, I ripped up your check. And they haven't, they ripped it up, they didn't deposit it on it. It was a $500 usage for two nights, so they said, it's, it's covered. Because that's, like he wants baseball to come back. So you want to begin next year, works. Yes. No, we'll definitely let everyone know how it goes, and we'll stay on top of that in the meantime, just because we, we want it to be a good partnership and something that benefits. Because like you said, right now it's so tough that everything's been canceled for these kids. We're so, we're so glad that it'll like, just finally be able to offer them to go out and do something. Okay. We're not talking grown adults. We're going to be doing slides and you know <laughs> drinking beer out there and everything. So, um, you know. all right. So we got a motion and a second. Susan, can we do a roll call vote? Alessia? Yes. Rick? Yes. Yes. Boons? Yes. Saint James? Yes. And Wilson? Yes. And you guys are going to get at least one port of party? Yes, yeah. I'll get one put in this week. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you, John. I consider putting a sign on that says usually your own risk, but yeah, well, yeah, we'll put just a relieve us all from liability, and we'll talk. Up, we'll provide some supplies in there and instructions on how to properly care and clean for yourself in there. <laughs> and we'll ask the uh, company to come every week to clean it up. Yeah. Um, just uh, town of Kingston for their deposit. Yes. Oh yes. Okay. And then I'll just get it and I'll turn it in. I need the insurance too. We have the. Um, yes, I'll get the. Just make sure they have insurance with us as insured. And, and on this, can we just have them list out specifically the dates? You just have 7 11 through 9 7 20. So it's every Sunday? Every it's, Saturday. Yeah, it's either every Saturday or Sunday. It's every yeah, Sunday. I'm just saying, so we know specifically, so we don't double book someone on that or if. Yeah, yep, I'll get the specific okay. dates he was going to do. But other than that, yeah, should be good. Okay. Excellent, thank all you right. all. Thank, thank you. you. time you met uh, there was a call from 47 Great Pond Road about trees Great Pond Park uh, here, right? yeah, pictures went out and looked at it, sent you folks back pictures today and a text message because email wasn't working Let me get my map up here so uh, the person that called lives at U4173, it's corner 6th Street, Great Pond Park. The lot in question that has the trees um, is U4175, 179, and 186. They're all kind of connected. Um, the trees don't actually hang over the person that called. It's the house behind, which is U4177, and I don't remember the gentleman's name. There's four or five big tall pine trees that have been hit by lightning over the years, some quite old. Um, the trees should come down. The only problem is, is it's a crane job. There's no way of getting in there and taking them down without a crane. Um, it's probably going to be a two day job. It's probably going to be not including any of the cost of my guys and my equipment, probably around $2,500 for two days for a crane, our numbers. Um, spoke with the gentleman that owns the property that the trees are hanging over. Again, that was you for, uh, I lost it again. 177. 177, I believe. Um, he's actually would be interested in buying that piece of property from the town of Kingston. Um, and then he would have the trees taken care of. You all know that the lots down there are tiny. Um, and we actually have to look at it because according to the tax maps, 
there might be a, a 20 or 40 foot strip that is owned by someone else on Fifth Street. So it might, he might not have, end up in a contiguous lot. It's pretty confusing in there. Where exactly the lots are and where we're talking about. Um, didn't talk to Dennis about getting a survey done to look at the actual lots, but if we're going to transfer it, that would have to be done. All those costs should be borne by whoever wants to end up with a lot, not the town of Kingston, not the taxpayers. That's my opinion. You guys can do what you want, you folks. Um, the big thing from me going down there and looking, there's an awful lot of vehicles, boats, snowmobiles, jet skis, boat trailers, snowmobile trailers, all You might want to look at that and address that. Um, I'm going to guess there's at least I don't think 30, ve 30 vehicles is out of the realm of reality of what's parked on town, on town property. Between, some of them are small, snowblowers and jet skis and little trailers and boat trailers and That's yep. a lot. Yep, but each one of those might be leaking a little bit of oil on your property, which uh, if the property's contaminated, it's your fault. And that's on the town property, so if the butter... Well, again, I'm, I, don't exactly. I, I don't know exactly where the property lines is. Common sense, but common sense always gets you in trouble when you're talking about lawyers. Am I right in assuming that a lot of them are on the property that we would that we, that the buyer might be interested in buying? All those vehicles would definitely have to be out of there before we start dropping trees anyways, so. Yeah, oh, and, and the third crate, set a crane up, it would probably have to be set in the yard of a person on Fifth Street and reach out over my guys would have to go in and make a hole to put the tops down in, and we could chip most of it and, carry, and haul the logs off. So the big expense is the crane rental. The next big problem is, uh, you know, a big crane, because those are big pine trees that have to come down, and they're going to be a, a long reach, so it's going to be, a, you know, probably a 100 tonner. So 2,500 a day is what you're saying? It might be that much. Rich, can I ask you? I At had least 1500 I'm sorry. I had a conversation with you before because I was concerned the amount of property that town owns. Yep. And I'd like to start seeing if we could, but you mentioned specifically Great Pond to be careful because it's, if we ever have to do something later for a septic system or public water, whatever, you said that was one you'd be cautious about. Absolutely. You got to be. So that lot, does that feed into that or, I mean? Well, that lot and um, the gentleman that called and complained about the trees is one of the low spots. It's, it's like the bottom of a bowl, so the water needs to run there into the wetlands. Um, if you did sell it, you need to make sure that it never becomes, never is developed, you know, other than maybe putting a septic system on it or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, Street. No, this is down on 6th Street. Okay. Yep. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, 6th or 7th. We seven. had this conversation. It's in between 5th six, 6 yeah. It's actually in between yeah, I'm up again. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, my, my personal feeling on it is that the town needs to get out of the owning land business all around because it just, it, it, it does nothing. It doesn't generate taxes. It, it creates problems like this, it just, we need to seriously look at divesting ourselves of a lot of these problems. But I think, again, to Rich's point, you know, those paper streets were left there for a reason. Will it be a street? No. But will it be a septic system at some point in the future? Maybe. And the road isn't quite wide enough to really, I mean, there's only one way in and one way out, so it's not like we can tear up the road and, and put a system in there. I guess. It's probably a nightmare to, to survey it. And that's the other side of it, is, is trying, I mean, it's, it's very ambiguous in there. 
as to where the so lines are. So that one lot could service three, three different lots, maybe four, where are actually five, and maybe six. Any one of the six lots that surround it, if they have a failed septic system, this piece of property could be used for a system that's pumped to it. Um, so who do you sell it to? Highest bidder? Um, I, don't, I don't know. I, yeah. The, the, I, I, pain, that's how we got in trouble with the tree cutter a few months back. Because it... And I'll tell you, without someone going down there and surveying, you don't know where the lot lines are. Because like, the whole thing has been cobbed up since 1929 when the first survey and the first lot was sold down there. 1929, almost 100 years ago. It's been screwed up since then. Because there was three different plans that were developed, that lots were sold off of three different plans, and the three plans weren't the same. Not even close. I think any land that the town has around that area is probably good because down the road, it's good. if you ever put in town water, you're going to need to have some of those outlets. I, I don't know. Hmm. I mean, I don't, not that I'm trying to task you with anything. I almost ask if you could take a look and see if there's something we could shake off and then make the offer. But I, you're right. I'm concerned about you know, there's still the, if we ever have to connect to Phoenix Drive or any of that stuff, there's so much that could happen down there. But you got to be careful. You'd have to have it surveyed to take any trees down because we're not sure it's even all on our land. Is that correct? Yeah. Am I correct in what you said? Yeah, looking at the tax maps, there's a strip of land that belongs to uh, U4176 that is actually on 5th Street. That's the house that we have we would have to get permission to put the crane on their property to reach over to pick these trees and put them on the ground. According to the tax map, that person owns all the way over to 6th Street. Some of those trees are actually, I believe, on that lot, but I don't know that. Again, without a survey, I'm, I'm guessing. I'm looking at the tax map, looking at existing conditions, looking at where existing fences are. Do we spend the money and have someone go down there and survey it? Not this year. You know, but how do we take down trees? You don't. We don't. We don't. I think, you know, probably the right answer is having an engineering firm doing a very preliminary study of how those utilities would be brought in there. Just a, a feasibility study mm -hmm. that, that would entail a survey. And I'm guessing you're looking at 20, 30 grand for them to come up with something like that. Sure, at least. That's yeah. on the low side. And that's the problem down there is, is if it's something the town's going to need in the future, we can't get rid of it. Even I, if we don't know exactly where it is. Yeah. Well, the other problem is it seems throughout the town, everyone is encroaching on town property. And I don't know what we as selectmen can do, whether we post a notice or something, because I think we're going to have to start taking action because it's all over the place. Well, I'm not sure taking action is the right phrase I would use. I mean, if we know... Let's look at another piece that we're going to look at. Yeah. We could always attach a deed. Can we at least put in the deed that recognize that their, their, their boundaries or their home accessories have encroached in town property so that it's on there? Can we record that on their deed so that when they go sell their house, um, it's clearly noted that, 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 let's say, that patio is on town land? I, I'd rather do something like that because it, if we're not you, uh, this sounds terrible in one way. If we're not using the land and they're making it look better, that's not a bad thing. By the same token, we have a re responsibility to the town of Kingston that if that's our land and we may need it down the road, we need to designate it as our land, even if it's on somebody else's deed and they're using it. Mm -hmm. You know where I'm going with that? I, I was trying to be kind of find a house. I'm trying to see who's, who has upgraded our stuff there encroaching on another I know but, but they can't sell it as their land. Oh I understand. Oh uh, Ellen just came in she had to mute herself. Oh. We're all good. But uh, um, I, I was thinking of the half moon situation. 
for example? Well, in that case, you don't have an option. Any, any case that involves a road, you don't have an option. It's your duty to make sure that road is free of any encumbrances other than a mailbox. Because um, all seven billion people on the earth have a right to use that piece of property that's called the road, whether it's a class one road or a class six road. That's not the tree road, that's the other one, right? Yep. Yeah. Any, any, any incursions. The tree one is actually, for the most part, an individual lot of land that the town happens to have the deed. However they got it, they got it. That's different than a road. Okay. A road, you absolutely have a duty to make sure that that is free and clear of encumbrances other than mailboxes and telephone poles. So let me ask you this, back to the tree one. That is not one of the paper road ones? This is it, it's not actually the road. It's an, actual, it's an individual, it's actually two, two individual, actually it's three individual lots that are kind of connected that aren't the road that the town's acquired one way or another. Someone didn't pay taxes or whatever. Okay. So they're not, yeah, it's individual lots of land. Okay, so two separate issues. Hmm. So your recommendation is you not take any action on that this year and we'll figure out what we're going to do for next year and budget accordingly? Are you looking at me? You guys make the big decisions. I just no. don't. No, we're asking for your recommendation. <laughs> um, please, please. So uh, a lot of them, is not, do I think, do I really think one of them is coming down the next few weeks? No. Um, they've all been hit by lightning. I didn't see anything that's in imminent danger of coming down. That being said, we might have a, you know, 60 mile an hour gust of wind and it might come down. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I can't, can't help that. But normal circumstances, I think it's probably okay to let it go for a while, but. Don't kick it too far down the road. Yeah. They, they, we really need to address it. We either need to get permission and get them down because they are leaning, hanging over our house. And we've been notified if something tr does happen, we're in deep, deep trouble from a legal perspective. And I guess if we're gonna have a crane down there, we should probably address- Look at a lot of them. The other ones that we're gonna be liable for because Which again, you tell me where the lot lines are, and we'll decide where the trees are that need to come down. That's the question that he's saying. He's not even sure if the trees are on our property. Those are, but others. But some of these trees that were in question that you took pictures of, according to the tax maps, are not on that piece of property. They, they belong to the house that's on Fifth Street's property because there's a 20 foot strip that runs through there that doesn't show its town property. Again, I've done no deed research. I'm not qualified to do that. And that's why you hire engineers and, and surveyors. I think that, I don't know how you feel about we're possibly looking at budget next year for evaluating down there. Well, I think at a minimum we need to talk to Dennis. Dennis, as our town engineer, take a ride down there and just get an idea on what it's gonna cost, get a budgetary number of, of what it will take to survey, you know, the land that we own, because it is a liability to have land that we own sitting out there unaccounted for, unknown where the lines are, and then with just random pieces yeah. of stuff on them with God knows what leaking out of them. Yeah, I'm just not ready to spend the money on taking down the trees if we're gonna take down someone else's trees. Well, let's, I think we should go to the Dennis Cotel but, one first. Right. And I don't think we're in a position where we can sell the land to anyone or... So I, I know there used to be a warrant article, Dawn. Didn't we used to have a warrant article every year that would allow the, the selectmen to sell yeah. properties? I'm just saying if we don't know what the lines are. Yeah, and, and, but if we decide what they are, I think you guys can sell because we used to do it every year, and then there was a 
one Warren Arcola was supposed to take care of from that point on forever. There was one that affected the budding owners that got first. That started a great point. I think it might have been, I'm thinking maybe Dave Welch. Could, could be. That was quite some time That's ago. That was a while back. That was a long time. Yeah. yeah. That it went and it passed that if the board was going to put those parcels of land up for sale, the abutter would the abutter have the first, had the first option. option to purchase. That was back in the Right, and the 80s, town, maybe the early, the 80s, early 80s, yeah. And, and the town had to offer it up to conservation first and someone else, and then it went to the abutters. And if yep. none of those people wanted it, you could auction it off, I, I think. Can we research that and find the uh, article? Yep, what, like what it basically says. Yeah, and I think Tori actually pulled a list together of all the parcels that the town, the town owns. When this came up last time, she has a list put together of yeah, everything. Talking about the article that allows us to sell. There's going to be two different articles. The one in Great Corn, I believe, was filed by Dave Welch, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that would have been back in about the same time, the early 80s. Yeah. That was about the time they stopped. That's like when. We're no longer authorized to sell the land unpaid taxes. That's when the transition occurred in terms of, um, you know, the other land. You used to be able to pay someone else's taxes for three years and then you own the land. So um, then that stopped. You couldn't do that anymore. The town could, but not the general public. Pick it but up. I agree with Kevin. We've got a tremendous amount of property right now that, you know, is doing nothing. If we could get rid of it and get some tax revenue. Right you got to be smart about it. Yeah. 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 No, I agree with that, but we need to start looking at them and figuring out what needs to go and what correct. needs to stay. Are we still technically in public comment because Ellen has a comment about this subject? Would you like me to put her on or read what she said? Uh, yes, technically we are in public comment. So if uh, you want to read what she said, but okay. I just want to make sure we're... Okay. Was, that, was that your... the gist of what you had to offer here? Okay. Um, she's saying the selectmen need to double check. There used to be a requirement about selling property at Great Pond Park that needed input from planning and conservation. Not yes. sure that is still a requirement. We will be talking about that. Um, due to possible future water supply, put snow we in the stick out off the road. Okay, so you're good with that? She, yeah, she's yeah. willing to speak to it if you want her to. No, no, because we're, we're aware of that. Time. Okay, yep. She's probably listening. <laughs> Do we want Rich to have Dennis contact Dennis to have him take a look at that area and just give us an idea? Yeah, I mean, is there anyone on the board who wants to be part of, to kind of spearhead that? Be part of those meetings? I'll, I'll take a look at it, but Dennis, if you want. So you've got a ton of paper roads down here where people have Taking up to 50%. So sure. you want to. Places all over town, people pay that. Yeah. Especially in Great Point, though, because a lot of those paper roads, people have think they have acquired over a period of time up to 50% of that. Let's, let's tackle one problem at a time. But you're absolutely right. We have correct. Sam's Lane that we talked about earlier in the year. Oh, there's another one. I well, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Just people oh, no, using no. town land all over the place. Supposedly, rent's being paid there to the store the boat on the town property. Well, that's going to change. <laughs> that's news to me. I haven't heard that one, but I, I am familiar with the property down that area from the zoning. All right, so Kevin, and if you want to I'll get a hold of Dennis. Rich and Dennis can tell him, but I'll report back on what he recommends. Okay. Thank you, Rich. Yeah. You leaving? Yeah. Um, what about hospital? You okay with the request for town equipment to do that work on the trails that's coming up? It's town equipment, I, as long as... Well, they said they talked to you. Yep, and okay. I explained to them it was town stuff. It's all up to the selectmen, and you guys get to decide if uh, insurance and liability, so all that stuff. So, we, we spoke about um, some of the people using some of the equipment, and it's recommended that um, there's some kind of a form they have to sign with Cindy? They have to sign a form with Cindy, liability, but we also talked about some kind of qualification class. Yes, some training class. They have some to have kind that. Of training, because we can't just throw somebody on a tractor who says I can operate a tractor. Oh, 
We're not talking about highway equipment here, folks. Yeah. What are we talking about? We're talking That's about a gator. That's what he makes it sound like. We're talking about a gator. A gator, landscape trailer, and a small tractor. Small tractor, it's a... Add on. You can have a lawnmower. We don't have a policy on the China equipment, do we? You can see take it as kind of policy. Use of town equipment. No. By others. There's no Even other either other people. There's, there's no policy on the The town volunteers. It's conservation commission. It's it's a crew that wants to build trails. Okay. So it's a benefit for the town. What I can see. Uh, the big thing is, like when we Back in the day, all the firemen and all the cops had to go take a state-sponsored ATV class. Had to have helmets on, had to have helmets available. It was, you know, it still is basic guidelines. Um, that's the way we read it the last 20 years, I guess. Don't cool. we host that class twice a year, the OHRV? No. That's we, snowmobile. We don't host it, but an organization uses our property to do it. That's snowmobile. Oh, it's only snowmobile. So I, I brought in some OHRV instructors probably 15 years ago. They did do an HRV class in the fire department a bunch of years ago, like eight or nine years ago. You can so off eight or nine years. Come on. Have I? Yeah, you have. So yeah, they should, they should actually, like I said, have that training class that I can get through Fish and Game or someone. They're old. And then there's a requirement that for our insurance, that they have to be signed up as a volunteer from Cindy and have all that information. Because mm -hmm. we look at that. I mean, Ernie Landry and a few of them were interested in that, and when they read that waiver, they didn't want to do it. Right. So the only trail that we have to move a gate around is the, the landscaping trail, the black landscaping trail with a tilt gate. But it won't fit through the trail. Are they going to drag it through the trails? No, it's just to get it on site. So if they're going to work on it like on a Wednesday, they would need to pick the stuff up and okay. bring it out, do their sure. thing in the woods, and then bring it back and put it away. So I can take that if the board would like, I'll take it. I mean, I've done the training before. So if you want me to see what the requirements are now, I'll come back to the board on that. I know that we looked at, I think it was the same group of people we talked about using the, the four wheelers last year. and. We went down and looked at it with Cindy, and there's some requirement our insurance company requires us to have. That was for them to sign that document. I think it's holding the town promise, I think it was. As volunteers, they have to do that anyways. Yes. Any, any volunteer group with this conservation is supposed to keep a log and a roster, you know, and they're supposed to sign up. So you're going out and work in the woods, if you're running, even if you Which just. I told them. Yep. And that's. And if that happens, supposedly if they get hurt, they've got some workman's comp coverage because technically they're, even though they're volunteering, the town has some liability. But the sheet that Cindy wants them to sign says a lot of stuff about any damage they do while operating the equipment. It's their responsibility, not the town's, and a lot of stuff that it just, you know, Several people read it and just said, I can't sign that. Did they, was that the one that came from the insurance company? I guess. Yeah. So, Don, do you want to check into that and sure. see what the requirements sure. are for the, the yep. ATV usage and, yep. and just run it by Primax if there's anything else that they'd be concerned with? And sure. Just so we can get those guys set up. Yep. So, you're okay with the switch then? They you, it goes. Yeah, it's a piece of town equipment. They break it, we're going to end up to fix it. That's all. That's okay. Used to that. Thank you. Thanks, Rich. Um, town reopening updates. Do the resident parking. It's after Oh, sorry. Um. So at 8 p.m. we had noticed a public hearing regarding resident parking policy. Um, Don, you want to cover the areas specifically in question and the policy? Yeah, so um, we, we had a number of complaints, and we still do, on the planes for people that are parking in the air. 
And so what they're doing is they're parking there, uh, even when the park closes, they'll park there, they'll go in. Uh, the trash has done much better lately, but, but still there's a certain amount of trash that's there. Uh, we had complaints over the weekend, but that was the uh, traffic waiting to get into the park. Um, so there's in front of the state park, we're still having a lot of issues uh, due to the weather down in front of the boat landing. Uh, in fact, some people are questioning why they can't get in with the key to the beach high bowls, which they can. So they think that's close to, sit to the residents, the citizens of Kingston, which it isn't. It should be open to them with that key. And the one that's more problematic than any of them are up here on uh, Greenwood Lake. Those are the three major areas that we have. So, so the intent would be to charge, I think it's $2 for a sticker. Yep. If someone wanted to use those areas and the town would only allow residents with the stickers to park there. So it would remove the out of state parking issue um, and hopefully limit the trash issues and the parking outside the areas and that kind of thing. Um, there would be signage placed in there if there hasn't been already. I think it's signage. The rich, rich has signed them all. Yeah. Okay. Um, and these would be the, the stickers would be available at the PD and the town clerk's office. That's my understanding. Yes. If I ordered them, they should be here in a couple of days. Okay. So this is just to notify the public if anyone had any comments. Are we doing another hearing on this or is it just a... We can, um, if you want to make it more in writing exactly where, exactly how many spaces or, you know. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll draft a policy and then we can vote on the policy at the next meeting. This is just for another information for the, the residents of, of the town. If they do have comments on it, the next meeting we'll have a section or a place for comments. Um, but the policy will be adopted at that time. And uh, Susan, why don't you and I work on that this Friday? Okay. If you want to start that, we can just get that ready for Monday. Any other comments on that? Okay. Uh, water testing of ponds. It's like states now, we're willing to do one a month. When they said a month ago they weren't going to do any. Step forward. So I was trying to find out if we have to have it twice a month or if that's just what they always did. The recommending, but I think that's just a recommendation. But what came of the, the state, the room on Greenwood? Did they, did they decide that no one should swim in it? No, it was just under the allowable level or whatever. That's what people. It right. didn't quite rise to the level of clothing. Which is why you, you test every other week, because depending on usage, we determine level of problem. Greenwood is a big problem. Yeah, all summer consistently. Long. Well, always and, been. And the animals are in there and drinking it, and uh, people are in there swimming in it, and it's an issue. That's why I thought we kind of said we were going to, at least Greenwood, I think we should be testing Great Pond, without a doubt. But Greenwood, I would say... I've got to call in to see if the state's going to be continuing to test their beaches. Because they, they have to close them at certain times, too. Debbie sent me an email after our last meeting about Great Pond being tested on a regular basis by the Lake Association. Honestly, my inclination is just to close Greenwood. Because yes. it, it's every year it happens. Right. We can't afford to test all of them. You know, if it comes back, I, I don't know. I mean, if we put up the sign and say it's closed, it, it removes the liability that we have. We already have, we've been told by the insurance company that swim at your own risk is, it doesn't resolve the supply. So I understand correctly. So. The state's not going to test it because the cost of sending someone down here, or is it both sending someone down here, drawing the sample, and testing the cost both. of testing? Both. It's both. So. That's according to this thing here. They're, they're doing it once, and that's it, right? Once a month. 
I mean, we could, we could, we could draw the sample and bring it to Concord, but I don't know what the cost of testing that sample. Is. Yeah, but the the issue is, like you said, if you're doing it every two weeks, you already have the level. It's like, how far is it going to go with the next one? I mean, I don't have a problem spending the money for Great Pond, but I have an issue with. Greenwood, I, I think. Well, I don't think we need to for Great Pond if the Lake Association is already testing it. Well, it says they test manually. Great Pond, they test uh, Great Pond, Powell Pond, and Country Pond annually. Annually. That's it. Yeah, but that's for the mill foil. Right. Not for anything else. I think we closed Greenwood and not have the issue. Yeah, that's what I would recommend too. And if anyone goes down there, there will be some people that will. They do at their own risk. But technically, we've closed the beach because of bacteria, right? Well, that's what the latest thing said, the bacteria, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's already it's elevated. It's just a question of when. And it's been no rain, and it's been humid. It's Yeah, this next stretch of weather will probably it's, it's, it seems yeah. I'll make the motion to um, post Greenwood be Greenwood Lake is closed. Raise the pond. pond. Greenwood Pond. Greenwood Pond. Greenwood Pond is closed. And I would base the pond. I think we had some signs made up already for that, didn't we? We like signs. I don't know. <laughs> we didn't have it closed, but uh, don't forget we got to add some signs. We have we plexiglass and sign makers. The only ones make it out in the spin. Big time. Big time. When they close it, doesn't the state provide a sign? I think we had some signs. Before. Yeah, Pete has signs that we that we posted down there. Yeah, we use the same one each year. But yeah, I, I don't even think we need to post for that. It's just it's closed. Right. Because we don't know that the the bacteria levels are elevated to that point until they test again. It's got the green green and blue stuff in it. No. So I made a motion. There's been no second. Second. What was your motion? To close Greenwood Pond. But public access for our beach, and Ellie seconded. Yeah. Discussion. I think for the safety, the the cost, the safety, everything else, it's inevitable. We talked about it. It's it, it happens every year, um, and I don't think it's. A so will you close it for the year, or will you? I mean, if you're not going to, I guess. Close it till September. I would almost say if, if they're going to test in August and we get the results back in August, state that it's free and clear, then open it back up. Or do you want to just? Well, my point is the liability at an elevated level, not at the closing, but if we wait till August for the test and it, and it comes back and we allow people, you know, and we, they recommend it's supposed to be every week, I thought. How much was the cost of testing? Every other week. I have no idea. Okay. It was like 175 or something like that. I didn't think it was the cost. I thought it was more getting the sample there every two weeks. Yeah, you have the staff. We have to, we have to, go, we have to pick up a container. We have to come down here and fill it. We have to take it back every two weeks. And they were giving us other labs, not theirs, to take them to. Like they weren't even going to test because of lack of people. Now maybe they've changed that. And I guess my question for the motion is closed completely or closed to swimming? Like, are you going to allow people to kayak? On? Well, I thought there was liability to swim at your own risk. I thought our only option was to close it. Well, what Rich is about fishing and kayaking and all that. Don't we want to allow outside activity? Yeah, I mean, they still allow those. They, when we've closed it in the past, it has been open. No, just to swimming. swimming, closed to swimming. Closed to swimming. Swimming and drinking. Dogs, animals. I think that's fair. I mean, if, if someone takes a canoe out there, that's the you know, Yeah, you want, you want them to be able to do that. Yeah. Fishing, okay. and just don't eat the fish. Break up the blue green algae with their paddles. Until they tip it over, but yeah. Keep your okay. mouth closed. <laughs> Fall in. Um, all right, so we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All right, so the motion is to close the Greenwood Pond Beach, the town of Greenwood Pond Beach, to swimming. Period. People and animals, correct? Yeah. Okay. 
I mean, I'm, I'm asking. I'm not saying. I'm asking. I, I think it applies to people. If people want to have their dogs swim okay. in there, people only. Still accessible to dogs. We can't even get people to follow the rules. We're going to start doing dogs. They're going to build that lake no matter what. Send Bill down the lake. Well, yes. roll call vote, please. Alessio. Yeah. Briggs. Yes. Coombs. Yes. St. James. Yes. 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 Okay, I'll let you. Okay, update assessment for the Sanborn School. It's in the clean correspondence file if you want to actually look at it. It's down the numbers. That's all I'm down. I know. I'm looking at you, and I'm like, I thought it was going to go drastically down. I mean, we had two assessments, but I sent copies of them to uh, Tori. Yeah, we gave them to the assessor. To the, uh, the assessor saw those two assessed values? Yeah, she sent them to them. Um, Did he know that he has to cut off that Chase Field property? Boy, well, that doesn't do it. I, 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 well, I don't know what he assessed. I mean, the Chase Field is the only thing that's not included in the new assessment. I think we need to check with the assessor before we approve this or accept it. I, I think it's awful high. I do too. Yeah, and I'm also looking at a building that no longer exists there as part of the card. French Street, a French, uh, the Those headmaster? Are the headmasters. I there anymore. It's in a rental main if anyone wants to know. So the question is, did they even look at the ones we said? That's not there anymore. That's the question to ask them. Did they look at it? This is the second time we're bouncing back something from this guy. I don't know that I like him, well, and I haven't even met him. That's not the biggest thing when we get to the end of the night. Anyways, I, I wouldn't accept that. I don't. I, I think they need to understand. Did did they take that piece off the Chase Field pot off? We don't know. Just one of you. Are the assessors coming in? Yeah. I mean, it's half the land, isn't it? Yeah. The assessors are they coming in yet? Um, they were here, we, 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 you have to, maybe. Oh, we moved two weeks ago, but they didn't start going into homes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ellie, the Chase Field is like a third to a half of the land, isn't no, it? No, it's not. It is not that much. Not that big? Okay. It's not. It's not half. Absolutely not half. Really? Okay. Chase Field, no. I could be wrong, but it's not half. It's, it's, it's nine acres. All right, so you take three off the chase field, so you get six. That's a third. Oh, that's what I'm saying. I would sure think chase with more than three acres. Mm. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Okay, so we have questions on that, yes? Yes. Yes. How would we like to handle that? Do we want to have them in to discuss it, or...? I'll talk to the assessor if you want me to, to see how they came up with that. Yeah. Okay. Would you, and ask them that they look at the ones yeah. we sent them. Yeah, so the, the, the science wing, the, the part they ripped off, that's on the tax card, and then the headmaster's house is still on there, so I guess you might want to ask them about that. So, ritual. Did they actually look at the assessments, is my curious. That's what I said. Did they actually look at what we sent them? Yeah. Do you want to just call him, or do you want me to set up I'll, a meeting? I'll get with you on it tomorrow. Okay. Perfect. I mean, one came in at 1.8, and the other one was, what, 8? Yeah. Or 7-something? And that included Chase Field. I mean, the field is worth something. There's no question about oh, yeah. it. There's no question. Yeah, you think how many residential houses you can put on a field? <laughs> Quite a few. Okay. All right, Half Moon and Iris. Has anyone not been down there? <laughs> I like the um, fortification he put up. The what? The fortification. He did a beautiful job. I got to give him that. But as you look down that right away, you see piles of mounds of dirt on the other side of it. You know that it's not done yet. This drawing is not near as good as the septic plan. It's not telling me anything. This tells you nothing. The septic plan shows the steps in the road. Okay. Shows the right of way. Okay, that was the septic plan. What did I give you? The septic plan. Yeah, this, I look at this, I'm like. Uh, I had a septic plan last year when I was down there with you, right? You're with, yeah. All right. I 
I thought it was me. No, the second plan shows the road, shows the steps on the road, shows the right of way for the, the lot, and how much the patio is on the road, right of way, everything. So that's what we really need we to do. We need the septic. I thought this was the septic plan. Sorry. It looks like one. I mean, it shows, I think this. It shows the leach field. Also, the way of one bedroom addition. I think this is the building permit that they turned in. No, I'll look again. This is what I found in the file. But I know I have a better plan that I had yeah. than this. So, moving forward, do we want to get a copy of that and state, you know, your recent additions are within the town right away? And According to that plan, there was a lot in the town right away. It's now, a whole world. It's well, I mean, the existing retaining wall that still exists there, at least, you know, as shown on this one, the TBM existing retaining wall. I think that's the only thing that could be a case for being left in there, but to, to encroach into the right of way the way they have is. This, this doesn't show the patio. Right. It's way out of the steps or way out in the right of way. I don't think this retaining wall is right on here. I think that's gone and that when they built it, the patio and all the steps and everything, they changed all that. Where's the turn? It's like... This is that. This, yeah, this, this is street. the turn. The steps come way out here. There's okay. the house over here. Yeah, see, they, they went beyond this. Top of wall. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's tiered. Mm -hmm. It's tiered. It's spreading right out. I, I mean, I would. I thought if we, if we were going to look at the septic, but I think we still. If the septic is going to say, I don't know if we want to wait another two weeks, but if the septic says they're approached, they gotta they gotta bring it back the way it was. That's a better better map. I think we should have the septic in front of us and go from there. Okay. Well, I don't think we should wait two weeks for that. I mean, if it's more stringent than this, is there any objection to us sending a letter that states they have an encroachment within the right of way and it needs to be resolved? No. Yep. I have no objection to that. Okay. I mean, I don't think a better picture is going to make the, the no. facts any different. No. As no. long as we have it in the file. Yeah. Well, you've seen it, right? The Peter's files, maybe, rather than the property file? The one you saw? I, I'll look. I don't know. Where did we get that plan? I don't know. Out of the file. Did it? I can't remember. Right. Right. I thought it came out of the file. It did. Oh, look. Right. Well, regardless, the onus is on the owner to yeah. prove we, that that's not correct. Right. He must come before us, right. but I think we should send a letter. So. So yeah. much of fixing his mailbox, huh? The wall. Um, so, we'll have that ready Friday. Okay. If um, authorize the chair to sign it. Second. Yeah. Well, I think that should be everybody's signature on that one. To be honest with you, it can't be. It can't. I have to abstain. I was I was involved from a different angle. Well, then you can abstain, but the rest of us could sign it. Right. I have to abstain from it because I was involved okay. from all a different the, angle. All the names on. Okay. So if. Next Monday, we'll send out a copy of the letter on Friday, and if everybody can get in, let us know it's ready. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. New business. Um, the Conservation Commission is hiring. Ron Klamarzik of Forco to complete the management plans and timber cuts for the two new town forests. Uh, we just need three signatures on this? That's the way it came to me. He's a, he's a pretty sharp guy. Now, is this all covered in conservation's budget, his fees here? Uh, That's my understanding. Um, 
Is everyone on Zoom? She's not on here. Um, I could talk with her tomorrow if you want to just check some things. That's my understanding of what's coming out of that budget. It didn't say in her, in her note there, did it? It says, because of the amount of money involved, not huge, but more than our usual expenses, she wants to know if the board should review this. Uh, Ron feels the proceeds from the timber cut will cover the cost of the management plan, but we have a separate account, a forest fund, with proceeds from old timber cuts and over, overages from our annual, annual budget with which to pay any uncovered expenses. Okay. This expense would not come out of our annual line item budget. So, any objection to that? Start right over here. Trails. Dawn's going to be falling up on ATV tools. I'll see the property assessment thing. I've got a quick question. I know we talked about um, some of the things, but if you go to the uh, Miss New Construction, mm -hmm. yeah. this form here, how, how much of this Miss New Construction? Was, uh, was completed prior to April 1st that we're missing sending out the tax bill for. So that's, if you look, I mean, I've been studying this as we've been speaking here, and you look at the number of, there's houses, there's buildings, there's, if you look at the value of this property that we haven't taxed, that was completed prior to April 1st, and these were missed new constructions, that were not reported. That's my understanding. Is that your understanding? Yeah. yeah. They they didn't pick them up. They they like to do it right at April first, and they were shut down because of the virus. So, they so I mean, if you if you look at these and look at the value that we haven't we haven't taxed, money. there's a lot of money there, and I don't think it's fair to the rest of the residents that we're taxing annually. If you're building a house, you know you're going to pay taxes for that. Or if you're building a garage or whatever you're building. So I think that's a problem. I, I'm looking at this as we were speaking, and I, I have a... Well, but the, the choice that, that needs to be made is do you want supplemental tax bills? Now? Yes. 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 I, would, I would make a motion that we do a supplemental tax bill. Absolutely. Because so, yeah, I think so. I mean, and it's because of the COVID virus. Yes. I mean, taxes... So it's not like it's in yeah, the... It, it has to, yeah, absolutely. It has to be equitable, equitable and fair for all. If I was on this list, I would rather have a supplement bill than be here for Everything in December. Yeah, I, I, totally I, I agree. It should be a supplemental bill. Absolutely. Do those for you want that as a motion, or you want to? Yes. Yeah. I said that you did a motion. Second motion. Second. 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 Yep. Any further discussion on um, that? The other thing I would say is I'm very disappointed with KRT. I, I, you know, I didn't realize that I, I saw this real quick, I saw it missed, and I just thought it, we missed it, or you know, it's like, no. I can't believe because they were closed for COVID, this could have easily gotten to them. Right. A number of different ways that would have been safe for our employees and their employees. They, they, they could have been, even if they didn't want to make the changes until April 1st, because they like to wait until after the second tax bill, I get that, but they could have already been out to look at them. Yeah. Because they were done last year, most of them. Yeah. So that's the part I don't get. And plus, you know, they can still work from their computers. Most of these you can drive by in a car and not even have to put the window down. Yeah. Right. Well, they missed President hand for one thing. And so I, I'm just and that's very big miss. Yeah, so it's already So if you look at the number of buildings. Yeah. Say so three strikes are out, they've got about six. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not big in my book, I'll tell you that. I don't think I need management. But President Hand, you're going to let him walk through December? I don't think so. Well, um, nobody's getting off the hook. We're doing a supplemental tax bill. That's so. it. That's it. That's well, not, not the app, not the bill, not the person's fault. That it's not. It's the uh, uh, assessor's fault. So nothing on them. But I think it's funny you're cleaning up my act. That's pretty good. <laughs> becoming a full-time job. Um, so. That's why I need you to stick around. We got a discussion on, or we've had our discussion on this. I, I think 
with regards to the assessing company, I think it needs to be pointed out to them, most likely in a letter. Uh, you know, this is at least the fourth thing I can think off the top of my head that's been a problem. And, you know, we need to make them aware that we're not overly Maybe. satisfied. Would it be proper to call them in? Bring them in. I, I think a letter is probably just a, Report. a good start. Okay. And if it continues to be a problem, then... They're not the only assessing company in New Hampshire, are they? No, but... They were the low bidder. They were the low bidder. <laughs> no, we actually tossed it around. They, was, they were all... There was a really high here. We had four, four. We had four, but anyway. Yeah. I, okay, I, let's go forward. Let's get those those bills out and let them know. Yeah. Uh, committee liaison reports. Uh, can I bring up something under new business first? Sure. Just a question. We've talked about several of these things before, but can we come up with, and maybe this is something for the inspectors meeting, a blank letter type thing it says it has been brought to our attention that your blank is being done without a permit please take care of this at once i mean i don't know that that's the wording but something to notify people that they're doing work without a permit they need to come in and fill out a permit because i've been called on three things in the last two weeks all of which are illegal all of which a permit would not have been issued which is probably why they didn't get one. That's probably why they didn't get one, but there are also three right out in the open things that people are going to see. Uh, Typically when they come to, so in the inspector's meeting we have a review and the way I've utilized the inspectors is they're the eyes and ears for the town on the ground to see these kind of violations beyond things that, you know, are just seen by other people. Um, and typically when something like that is brought to the, our attention, nine times out of 10 it goes to Robert. If it's something that he hasn't seen, didn't get a permit for, he'll go out and look at it and speak to them and let them know that they need to get a permit in. And I would say our success rate is pretty much like 99%. We're getting anybody who we catch, you know, who is out there not, who is doing construction without a permit, are usually, they come in and get a permit once he goes and speaks to them. Um, so that's how you want to handle it, just, just send them to Robert? That, I, I mean, a face-to-face -face conversation seems to be the effective way to get it. I mean, it, the problem with sending a letter is, well, it's two things. One, Robert can go out there and actually see what's going on. You know, if he goes to the residence or the, the place where the violation is taking place, he can actually see and he can tell them, you're going to need this, this, and this. You know, you need an electrical permit, a piping permit, and a building permit. Um, so it acts as just kind of an impromptu meeting for the <laughs> the non-applicant. I guess I won't call the applicant. Um, there are times too where someone isn't—they don't need to get a permit. Like it's something someone sees, and and it's not something that requires. It. It's I've rare. Seen, but, I've seen all of these and they all require permits. Yeah, and then, I mean, if you want to email that to me or Robert. Okay. And, and, well, I, I would say specifically, if you want to just CC me on anything, send to Robert so I can I can know to close the loop. I mean, Tor, that, that spreadsheet we just had, Story, Tori does have this each week of all the outstanding yeah, permits. I've talked to her about that. I'm good to get on that list. Yeah, so those go out on a weekly basis, um, usually on, well, I don't know what day we're doing it now, but um, she sends it out on a weekly basis so everybody has access to that. So if there is something, um, you can just reply to that distribution list and, and cause there are some that are, I guess it's not ones that don't need a permit. It's ones where there've been verbals given because of an outstanding issue that's pending with the planning board or just something like that. And I, we're trying to get away from that more and more because it's really not a good thing for the town. But um, yeah, by all means, I mean, it, if, okay. That's typically where we capture those things is in the inspector's meeting. And if you do see anything like that, please let me or Robert know. Okay. Um, I guess I, I had one thing in new business that came up tonight, you know, with the internet thing, and I wasn't here when you guys discussed this, but I do think we are lacking redundancy around here. 
where if one person is out, nobody else knows what's happening. And I think we need to make a more concerted effort to have. Well, it became, yeah, it became apparent. Well, I wasn't here Thursday and Friday. I don't know how long it's actually been out. But when I came in, when all those emails would pop up, they didn't pop up. And I did know right away because Rich stopped by um, and I talked to the clerks. Yeah, but we're talking about the backup for Cindy. That, that has to be, and everybody has to have backup. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Rich has Brian in the town hall, or at the town barn. Dawn has Joel. You know, we need to make sure that we're setting up a, a, a counterpart. And, you know, Tori knows her job, you know, Cindy's job, and, and everybody's kind of, and even passwords, like, I, I think that was one of the sticking points today was a password. Yeah, and we, find, we did find that folder, but it didn't help, so. So we're still, we still have a problem, we still don't have internet. Yeah. And, and the other issue that came up tonight earlier was that we don't have a secure site. This iPower is, is, we really need to replace it. It's time. It's time. Yeah. I... And we're talking about .gov, we needed to, to be on a site that has more security. I mean, we're a municipality, we shouldn't be this vulnerable. To... So I could bring down the gentleman that just audited me for for our computers that we use. At the, fire, at the police station? Yeah, because we use federal sites for running NCIC, criminal records, motor vehicle records. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that you'd be surprised that, that if you don't take it, you know. So they hack in and they shut your systems now, which they've done all over New Hampshire, and they hold you hostage until you pay. And they, they know everything about you. They know, you know how much money your budgets are, so on and so forth and they, they hit you for Bitcoin. Well, that notwithstanding, we have a tag, town clerk was collecting taxes online, processing registrations, and she, can't, she couldn't do any of that. It probably would be a good idea. In fact, the two gentlemen from the school that, that oversee uh, our system, that, I mean, we were all taking notes as to what we needed to do better and differently. Um, so it's, I mean, this guy, People come down, they look at your system, they tell you where all your faults are. Well, I thought, I mean, city's not here to stay, but I thought it was the schools that set us up with the iPod. I don't know. I don't I mean, know. And that guy's going, by the way. Yeah, I, I, mean, I just think on this one, I think we might have to hire some IT person to come in and evaluate and give us a recommendation. Well, because we need to do something, and it's not just bring iPod back up. That's exactly correct. We need to bring high power back in the meantime, but that's not what we need to start. Uh, I mean, it's serious. Yeah, because they, they, they need it. I think we need to hire a consultant to bring a recommendation. Yep. So and we probably should go out a bit in there, right? I don't know. I can ask if this gentleman will come in and take a look at it. Yeah. Let's do an assessment. In the yeah, room. I don't I mean, if anyone else in here knows where to go from, I mean, I, we don't even know what they, we don't know. So. They, they could make some recommendations too, because they're. Essentially, if, if they get into our system, they get into all the federal systems and all the state systems. So if we're not secure at our end, they follow that line right back. And, and the, the fire department, I'm sure, is going to be going down that road anyways with the new system, right? Yes. Yeah, there you go. So, so we need to be in that up So if you want to get them in to see where we're at, and they'll determine whether they're going to bid or to be three competitive or whatever. And in the meantime, when is Cindy going to get back? So, I mean, we're, we're hostage to her absence. We'll just try to kind of get in touch with her. Usually she would respond to her cell phone, and we can get it today. I'm hoping for tomorrow morning. So she hasn't answered the cell phone? Okay, so let's, uh, Don, you're going to talk to him? Yes. All right. Um, and then, Susan, if you want to just liaise with Cindy, you know, let's just try and run through worst case scenarios if someone's down. Because I think with the COVID thing, we need to be cognizant of the fact, like Rich was saying, Hampstead's entire highway department has COVID. Yep. Yeah. You know, if that happened in the town hall here, or if we only had one person, we need to have someone who can right. keep the lights on. Find it. Everyone think. should have a backup in this hall. Right. Everyone. And in this case, it was just a matter of, okay, if something happened, where do you keep this information, I, you know, I, I found the passwords, but the other information to be able to work with the company, I don't have. Right. So, right. 
but, right. but all the way around, every, every person that works here needs to have a backup. Yep. From the bottom line. Yeah, someone else besides you should be able to post on the web. Someone else besides Cindy should be able to cut checks. You know, that type of thing. No, and I think it's another thing, too. With Ellen, you know, someone can still fill in, at least have access. So, you know, if there's planning board materials that need to be accessed or human services things, we need to be able to keep That's functioning. If someone is, you know, if someone's on vacation or can't be reached, it, well, that, we've just got to start building in some redundancy. Adam is on Ellen's back. Right, I think Adam, yes. But that's but we don't know that for, I mean we need to know who's the backup for everybody. That's for welfare for planning board though. Right, right. Yeah, and planning board we probably for Greenwood. Greenwood. Right. But I, let's I, just get that in place in a structured way that I agree. You know, there's yep. a pre handoff and hopefully it's not needed, but we're just prepared for emergencies. I've got a couple things I'd like to bring up as well, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Okay. Um, we still haven't had a financial update. I mean, I know Tammy told us that taxes were looking good, but we talked about July 1 for a review of our financial condition to see how we're going to implement the raises, number one. And number two, we need to make sure we get that done. So just I'm bringing that up as a, as a follow-up that needs to be addressed. If she gave us that financial. She did it in terms of the tax collection. Yeah. But, you know, it would be nice to have a... a so we've got revenue, but we want expenditures. Exactly. Today. Yeah, yep. exactly. So how far off from expenditures are we? I think that to get a better picture of our financial condition halfway through the year, you should know that. It's, it's time to take a look at that before we go further forward. And then we know what is available to expend or not expend or where we have to cut back accordingly. So are you saying we delay the payroll talk until we get information from Senate? Well, we said we weren't going to do the increases until we got a financial update. And, and knowing our revenue is not, to me, a complete update. So I, I'd like to see the expense section. And that was, as Tammy said, was not a complete update because it's from Friday. That's correct. Yeah, she Before said, the computers yeah, when I spoke to her earlier, she said she's had numerous weekends where someone would just do a, a wire transfer of $100,000 and change yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. So. But we should have an update on that. Um, we we opened up the town hall, but in the but everything else is open except the library. Are we ready to even go down there? Or? I've had a number of community members approach me about when we're going to let the library open up. I know they're doing curbside and they're taking requests for books and getting returns. Um, is that our decision? Or that was well, we closed it. We're the ones that said that all buildings will be closed. Okay. So we can say if the trustees want to open up, they can. I thought we told her that when they worked it out and talked to Peter that they could open. That's all I remember. Oh, okay. I didn't yeah. catch that piece. And of I know they're right? taking steps. Yes. Okay. All right. And um, I know uh, the budget committee is looking for a secretary. I know we talked earlier about you know volunteers, but that, that is a paid position. I'm assuming that they're going to put in a notice in the paper. Um, Chuck Hart stopped in today. Okay. And he is talking with someone, um, the person that does historic district commission. Okay, okay that good. As well. no, that's so good. Um, he'll let us know. Okay. And um, Glenn Greenwood, Glenn Koppelman, excuse me, sent us a copy of the fireworks permits that uh, was at Hampton Falls does. I thought that was a clever idea. Say that again. They charge for fireworks permits in Hampton Falls. Glenn Koppelman sent us copies of the links to the, their website yeah. and their yeah. procedures is what they do. So in other words, someone comes to the town hall, pays a fee, and gets permission to do fireworks. Now, I don't know about your neighborhood, but mine was up in the flames for two plus hours on the other night. I mean, is it, the, is it a revenue source? Just bringing it up. Remind and follow up on what Glenn That's an enforcement thing. It's, yeah. an enforcement, it's a liability thing. We looked at that before about issuing permits for, yeah. for fireworks. And at the time, we're supposed to go out and look to make sure where they're shooting them, how much they're going to shoot, what they're going to shoot. So it was a thing with fire and police. The problem is that once we issue them the permit and they burn the neighbor's house down, that puts the liability on the town. Okay, all right, never mind then. But I can, I can, I can. And as I was watching my neighbor who's on a very, very small lot lighting off very, very big fireworks.
fireworks. Oh, I, I was just curious. I, so I, would we issue them a permit I under can, that policy? I, I can't can. see how it would be possible. I can check with I can check with Primax if you want, but the last time I checked, that's what they said yeah. the liability. If we issue permits. And then how do you enforce those that don't pull the permit, and especially the fourth? And we say, oh, geez, I can't enforce our building permits. Okay. That's the last uh, thing. Okay. Okay. So it was that something it, was, it was good. I, I did read it. It was. Yeah, I thought it was good, too, but. I was in Hampton Falls when they did that. They had a lot of discussion because people didn't want it, and people that did want it. Well, we get the fireworks anyways, whether we want it or not. Yeah. I was just saying, if we're going to get it anyways, why not have another revenue source? But well, I guess my biggest question on that was, what was that trying to accomplish? Well, that's is, it, is it curbing fireworks? Because it's still allowing like five displays a year. And so, and I briefly read through the policy, but it yeah. just didn't seem to me that it had a, what it, I mean, from a lot, it, it's putting liability on the town. It wasn't really limiting the number of fireworks because right. someone could do up to five fireworks displays per season. And well, what if I get one permit and my wife gets another permit, and then my son gets another permit? And I mean, then you, you, you know, don't have to be trained to do it. It, it just it okay. didn't seem like it, it, it. I didn't know what it was trying to accomplish. Okay. I guess. We, we did have an issue on the south end of town where people have horses and animals. And that actually went to court. We didn't issue permits. Uh, we did get out and tell the people that it was a complaint based upon what, what was happening with the horses and the animals. And that actually went to court. And the court, the court ruled because uh, in favor of the property owner, the horse, horses. It ruled in favor of the animals that couldn't, that were scared? So what did that mean? That they, the town couldn't have more fireworks? No, no, it meant that the neighbor couldn't shoot the fireworks as much as... Oh, well, okay. Any. So that was a Hatfield and McCoy kind of thing? It was, yeah, quite a, it was a long court issue with a couple of the neighbors. Well, if, if we have fireworks like we did the other night and that continues, we're going to have more of those. That's all I'm saying to you, because it was pretty loud. If I had a dog, he would have been in the bathtub, which is usually where they hang out. Yeah, try having 16 cows. I can't even imagine. <laughs> in eight. My dog in the basement. Um, okay, anything else? Nope, that was it. Any other new business? Uh, Not new business, but liaison. Oh, I thought you were going to liaison. Nope, so. any new business. Okay. Liaison reports. Planning board, I brought up the fact that um, we wanted, or you wanted, a uh, enforcement about the Tormeo tree cutting. They I, I thought we were a board. We all approached this together. We, the proverbial we. Said that all they voted to do it. I had a guy in there, I don't know if it's been turned in, Alice Bray, to respond to that, but there was a lot of why in the conversation because they said the complaint went into Chief Briggs and to me, we investigated, we saw the violation, we're the enforcement agent, why did we need them to support it? What I have been repeatedly told is that we need a request, if it's a violation of the planning board's rules and regulations, we need a request from the and planning board. that's what board. I said. That's, that's how it was always explained to me. If I'm wrong on that, please. No, you're right. I, I just. I was with Mike managing the. Because they're an independently elected. Uh, it wasn't like it was a site plan. It was a regulation. It wasn't like. But anyway. But I think where that fell under is because they didn't have. It wasn't explicitly stated in a site plan. I don't know. That's my feedback. They're going to send an enforcement letter. How did the. Uh, design review? Actually, you know, it's one of those things that when I hung up, I said I can, I can take both sides on this thing. I can understand the abutters being upset with it, but I can also say the engineers did a tremendous job of presenting it. Um, and I think they did exactly what they want to do. I mean, in my opinion, they wanted to find out the hot spots that they had to take care of and they had the things that were just going to get looked over type things why the people were complaining, what they were complaining about, so they could deal with those. I thought it was an outstanding presentation. It was the best presentation I've ever seen. 
and it really set the bar. If neighbors notwithstanding, he'd need very few variances to put that project through. They pretty much adhere to the rules and the regulations of the town, including the buffer zones needed. They had the, the biggest issue was they have a road, they're proposing a road that spills out into 107. And that's where the complaints came in from the abutters of 107. What, a couple of Brookhaven, Marshall Road, and the 55 plus to. It's an emergency. It, it would probably be a required road, he said. That anyway. He said it was for their access, but I think the town is normally, I mean, they were going to make uh, Annaford's do the back. Right. You they know, would have to do that to have an ancillary road in the back that would dump out there. Which, is this the SLS or it's, it's, it's yes, SLS? Yes. Okay. It's that whole development of that property. The, um, they had, they're proposing the four buildings on it, one of which is the existing Sears Logistic Warehouse of about 140,000 square feet. I guess there's a smaller office building to the front right. To the front left um, is the proposed uh, convenience store and gas station. And then the new warehouse is 800,000 square feet with all the parking around it. I mean, that's... The concern of the residents was 24 hours a day. Um, and they didn't commit to that yet, though. No. But it's coming. Um, it's coming. And then there was a question about how they were getting their employee count, which I don't even know why they brought that up because that's not really their issue. Because that's they were a septic comparing, issue. Right, but they were also comparing it to an existing facility somewhere else and they right. assumed it was that particular company, it may or may not be, and what they were doing in that site, and that's what that one woman was using as an example. But, but, um, but it was excellent presentation. Outstanding. Is that on the web, on YouTube? All of our meetings yeah. are. Okay. Yes, yes. Probably had 30 people other than It was, uh, yes, and about 35 more plus the no. Other than planning for the Traffic is going to be a problem. My issue is that store they want to put in there. That store is not only for people that are going to work there and vehicles that are coming in. Oh, no, I, I what I thought of is the rest stop area. I think of the road down to. So, so you're going to have a number of traffic crashes there. Well, you're going to have they, many I think they're handling it. They had left turns, right turn lanes, and yeah, center. They had they so had stop I'm sorry, I know I started this, so I should probably stop this. So what I would, what I would, what I would suggest is you go to Nashua, one of the places, as soon as they turn the switch, and let the little vans leave. I, I'm here to tell you what I pictured on that when I saw her on that drawing was what you see on the highway where they have a speed up lane, slow down lane, and all, that. lane all that's on And they there. said they were working directly with NHDOT. And, uh, already. Dealing with them. So we've already, we already had one meeting that we went to Concord on. And, uh, it, you know, so they're looking at limiting their, their curb cuts. So that's, that's one good thing, because you don't have traffic coming out everywhere. Do you know what the impact fees for the police station would be? Well, I mean, the, 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 the issue is going to be if you're going to have. Well, you're to, if you're I gonna, know what the fire department is. If, if, if you're going to do if you're going to do 50 accidents a day, they're going to need to hire four or more full-time officers. And they may be. So that I can tell you right there, you're going to have a number of traffic-related issues. Okay, so conservation. Yeah. Fire department was four hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. All right. So, C conservation committee, any liaison reports for that? Uh, I'm still working on that shooting thing. We may yeah. have to change that path. Oh yeah, yeah. We may have to do that, um, but I'm still working on that particular issue. What was the other issue I had to bring to? Oh, we've already discussed it. So, no, that's that's all I think. Um, just so I'm not really a liaison, but back to the um, Affinity Lighting. Cindy is working with Affinity and Unitil to get her hands on how this will all, you know, there is a deposit that's going to have to be made for the street lights to Affinity so they can buy the light house not install. Then, then it comes into a loan from Unitil and we should be able to continue paying them. But Cindy's working on it, that's all. Okay. Um, 
Just so you know, Ellen said she's got the letter ready for, for the enforcement request, but she couldn't send it out for signatures because of the email. <laughs> it's in the works. I have one quick legal matter I need to talk to the board about. In non-public? In non-public. Or in a legal meeting? Okay. Um, so we have numerous signature items here, um, including abatements, and so I'm signing these, but we'll send those around. Um, I don't think there's... Do you have time to look at the reopening guidelines? I, the one we I thought they were pretty good. Yeah, because people are asking about the meetings in particular. But I like the fact that we left the chairman that we could, it, subcommittees could modify make to make it comfortable for them. Yeah. Yes. I thought that was a good way to express it. Because the zoning board is not as big as the planning board for it. They're all different. Yeah. It's all a little and bit I different. I know, I think it's a consultation. Somebody was going to have a meeting outside, so there's different ways. And that's okay, too, yeah. if, that's, if they're more comfortable. I, I, I like that, uh, that flexibility for each committee to within, within our guidelines just to go forward. Um, we've got the condominium plan for six Bruce Lane here if anyone wants to see it. Also we have something from Stony Ridge Environmental um, regarding a project located at 82A Main Street in Kingston. Uh, the applicant is proposing to replace an existing retaining wall and steps. The existing 73 foot long retaining wall and steps will be replaced with no increase in configuration, dimension, or size. So if anyone wants to see that plan, here it is. Um, and then we'll send these around for signature once I get here. Oh, um, so you will see all the motor or the junkyard permits, recycling yard, motor vehicle, junkyard licenses. Uh, Don and I went around today, looked at all of them. Everybody was up to snuff, very accommodating. We do need to do one sign for the dumpster we talked about. Yes. Did you uh, say what you wanted? They did. Uh, white goods only. No household trash. No household trash. No what? Big one. No. No household trash. They're throwing everything in there beside the white goods. Oh, uh, when I was there, the mattresses and everything. Yes. And he said he's dumping, what did he tell us? He's dumping a ton of stuff. So it's really being used, which is good. That means they're not dumping in the woods and everywhere else. Um, he's, he's getting a lot of use out of it there. It's down in the Boston Road? Yes, Symes, it's on Symes Road. Okay. It's a huge dumpster. Yep. So people are throwing air conditioners, refrigerators, freezers. Every stores. time I've been there, a dumpster's been full. Yeah, it was probably, what, a quarter full today, I think. He'd already crushed it up to stuff. And... Yeah. Uh, okay. and consequently, our complaints about people dumping stuff in the woods, freezing the refrigerators, has gone way down. Yep, save yourself some walking. Just go on New Boston Road and you can put it right in a dumpster right there. You don't have to wander into the woods, get bit by mosquitoes, and you can be legal. Free of charge. Just no household trash, please. Um, anything further from the board? Okay, we have a non-public session to follow this. You want to approve the minutes? Oh, yes. Um, I did have one letter that the person was concerned about lack of adherence to the guidelines. I don't know if you wanted to address that. Just an email. It wasn't quite a complaint, but should be in your stuff. For the building? No, not in the building. It's just in general, I think. For the community. It was an email um, made out to you. Question. Where right. was that? Um, I gave it to you. I didn't. It's a kind of a long email. I didn't. I didn't get that. Uh, if not, okay. Maybe I didn't get it. To you. So so never mind. I'll give it to you now. Yes. If you take a look at it. I think it's for in the town in general, maybe not just the... Why don't you know. put it in the next packet then? Okay. Give us a chance to read it. Make a motion to approve the minutes of uh, June 22nd. Second. I bet he's running well. Go ahead, approves. Okay, we've got a motion to second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Anything 
else? Susan? Uh, no, no, I think that's it. Okay. That will conclude the televised portion of this evening's meeting. Please have a good night. Okay, so we're not public for legal, did you say?